Hello YouTube Preppers, this is the comms prepper with a video uh, again about satellite communications with uh, dual band handheld radios. Uh, I decided to try to make a video today for a specific satellite pass, uh, the Saudi Arabia satellite SO51. Uh, there was a pass this evening on the 12th of January at 10.10 p.m. here local time in Moscow, Russia. So I put some slides together to give you an idea how I planned for this pass and then went outside and actually tried to establish communications on the satellite. Uh, full disclosure, while I was able to acquire the satellite and hear other stations, I was not able to raise any stations. Uh, it's a little bit cold here and I, I couldn't work the knobs on the radio fast enough. It was uh, 7 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 13 degrees Celsius and 10 minutes out there I, I couldn't feel my fingertips. but. I went ahead and made the video anyway. So the specific pass I'm talking about was today, as I said, on the 12th of January. Uh, I went to amsat.org and looked at the schedule. And you can see the, the third one here highlighted in yellow. This was the, the pass I was going after. Once I knew what pass I wanted to try to access, I took my applications that I have my pad and looked how the path would be and compared them against two separate applications to make sure everything was lining up correctly. And the, the data I was able to pull from amsat.org was at 10.10 10 p.m. The satellite was going to enter my area uh, at 231 degrees, uh, pass almost directly overhead, and then go out uh, northwest and disappear over the horizon uh, north of where I live. Something I didn't cover in my last video is the actual angles of the antenna that you're holding in your hand. Uh, you'll see the rings on this application and this gives you an idea of degrees of elevation you need to raise the antenna. So if you look at the application at 210 or 2200 hours, 10 minutes in the southwest, the satellite appears on the horizon. So this is zero degrees holding the antenna straight out. And as the satellite's moving towards me, I need to be raising the antenna, tracking it along. So about midway, it's 45 degrees. And at apogee, or when it's directly overhead for this pass, I have to hold the antenna at about 79 degrees, pointing it up towards the satellite. Then when it passes over me, it'll start arching back down again, and I start lowering the antenna until I follow it to the horizon at zero degrees, and it disappears. Here's a... A Google map shot of uh, where I'm going to try to access this satellite. This is a little park where near where I live and I have the little bullseye kind of thing there to match what the application has and the green line represents the arc of the path the satellite's going to take. So if everything goes as planned the satellite's going to enter at the southwest and pass over the park, pass over where I am, be directly overhead and then start going lower in the horizon to the northwest or northeast until it disappears over the horizon. Uh, this looks kind of easy but there's a, a lot of moving parts to make this work and as I learned tonight when I tried to do this all the moving parts with my frozen fingers I, I just couldn't pull it off. So in addition to knowing when the satellites coming and from what angles and what elevation you have to have your antenna you have to point the antenna. Uh, as you're communicating you have to rotate the antenna with your wrist uh, to get the best signal to try to reduce some of the static and while this is all happening you need to be changing the channel knob on the top of the radio to track the Doppler effect as the satellite is coming towards you and then going away from you. So the first thing you want to get is are you pointing the antenna in the right direction? You have the right bearing so when the satellites coming up over the horizon you want to be right on it and using the applications and the schedule from amsat.org, when it gives you the acquisition of satellite bearing and the loss of satellite bearing, you can go out there with a compass and find uh, physical landmarks and say, okay, it's going to come up over this house and disappear over these trees. And then get an idea how you're going to have to point the antenna for the path. Uh, again, I have some pictures here where I hold it straight out at 0 degrees, then 45 degrees, and 90 degrees. This is going to be the path you're going to have to use with your antenna to talk to the satellite. Another anomaly you'll experience is uh, the, uh, the polarization of the antenna on the satellite. Uh, these satellites are tumbling as they're passing overhead. They're literally rolling. And I have these little blue circles 
coming off the antenna, and that's kind of showing the radiation pattern for the radio waves. So this can uh, interfere with signal level. So as the satellite's tumbling overhead, you may hear it get real staticky and then get clear. Uh, a way you can compensate for this is rotate your wrist counterclockwise and clockwise and twist the antenna a little bit, and you can clear up that static because you're kind of matching the polarization of the antenna you're holding to what the satellite's doing at that particular point in time. And here comes the tricky part. In the previous video, when I talked about Doppler effect, uh, as the satellite's approaching you, the frequency is actually going to be higher than what the satellite's actually transmitting, because this is the Doppler effect compressing that frequency. So tonight we're going to try to access the AO, or I'm sorry, the SO50 satellite. And here's the programming chart for that satellite. And as you can see, when the satellite shows up to southeast to 1010, we're going to be on the first channel. And then you're transmitting 436, 815. But as the satellite approaches us and progresses through the path, we're going to rotate from channel 1, channel 2, channel 3, channel 4. And each time I take that step, I'm actually lowering the receive frequency to compensate for the Doppler effect. Until the satellite's directly overhead, then I should be at the mid-range. Uh, and I highlighted that on the chart in the middle. Uh, I think it's 436.795. That's the actual operating frequency of the satellite. And then when the satellite passes over and starts moving away, the frequency is still getting lower. So we'll, we have a couple more channels programmed into the radio to change the receive frequency to match it. And this is where I kind of blew it tonight because I got out there and again, it was 7 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 13 degrees Celsius. And it got to the point where I actually couldn't feel the knob on the top of the radio when I was trying to roll through it to, to keep up with the satellite moving and tracking the antenna. So I kind of, kind of blew it. So not a total failure. So I'm going to pause here with the, the slides and roll into the videos uh, where we went out tonight and tried to talk. And uh, at least you can actually hear other stations as a satellite came up overhead. I tried to make a few calls and didn't reach anybody or they didn't respond to me. Uh, the satellite was a little bit active. so, And I only have a little portable station, so I was only putting about 5 watts. So here we go. We'll roll into the video. Okay, so we're outside here, and we're about eight minutes away till the satellite's showing up. So what I have here is the Aero 2 antenna hooked up to the ASU handheld. And I know this gets blurry, but basically I have that set to the first channel for SO50 satellite. And then I have the tracking software here running. I'm not sure if you can see it. Let me move that out of the way. So basically it's going to come in from the southwest, it's going to pass almost directly overhead and go out of sight over the horizon in the northeast. So just to do a quick pan, this is uh, it's night time outside in the park and it's pretty cold, but uh, that's southwest so the satellite's going to pop up just over that house and it'll pan up and go up and come around and disappear over that way over by those houses so I'm gonna pause this here for a second and get ready for the satellite and hopefully this won't be a, an epic failure okay a uh, couple minutes away I'm not sure if you can see that I'll try to get in close but, uh, there's a satellite just entering uh, uh, this middle of Africa getting ready to come up over into Europe on the Med and it's probably about three minutes away from Moscow, so I'll keep a close eye on that and then I'll switch to the other program. Recording Romeo 3 Charlie Uniform RT 85. Romeo 3, Charlie Uniform, Portable. <laughs> Romeo 3, Charlie Uniform, Portable. Romeo 3, Charlie Uniform, Portable. 